Hello friend, Terraria is a nice little game with so many things in it. Even though there's so much in it, the game doesn't really hold your hand as you progress. It just throws you in with three tools and, well, a weirdo. That's why I'm here to give you tips that every beginner should know, and hopefully that will clear up any misconceptions that you might have about Terraria. I'm Zuzucorn and I aim to entertain you, encourage you, and offer you a place to call home. So subscribe now and join the Zuzucorn family. Let's begin. The first thing I really have to address is the difference between the game modes and the character difficulty settings. I've used my fair share of Reddit, and my gosh this is such an issue. So please pay close attention. The first thing you absolutely have to know is the difference between the world types. This is the world difficulty setting. Normal means that the difficulty is normal, or one times difficulty. Expert is two times difficulty, where the bosses might have newer attacks and also do more damage, along with some other stuff. However, loot drops usually have double the drop rate in expert worlds, and there are some expert exclusive accessories and cosmetic items. Master mode is three times difficulty and offer mostly cosmetics. Now that you've understood that, know that all of these classify as standard worlds. So normal, expert and master mode worlds are standard worlds. So there is no funny business going on in there and you get an authentic Terraria experience. Journey on the other hand is a whole different creature. Journey worlds offer you more customization. They are like creative mode but with a twist. Firstly, journey worlds allow you to control things like time, weather, enemy spawns, and can even give you god mode. You start with more items here, such as a pair of starting wings, an item to teleport you home, and better tools. Journey worlds also feature research and duplication. For example, if you sacrifice 100 wood to research, you have researched enough of that, and you can now spawn in as much wood as you could possibly need. Essentially, this is like creative, but you need to earn the creativity. Most importantly, Journey Worlds have a World Difficulty Meter. By default, it's in Journey Difficulty, or Half Times Difficulty. But you can set it to Normal Difficulty, which is 1 times, 2 times for Expert, and 3 times for Master. And the best part is, you can still get the exclusive loot from here. So to some extent, Journey Worlds are all worlds. But just remember that Journey Worlds are a whole different creature. It's definitely not the same authentic Terraria experience like the other standard worlds. Now that you know the difference between worlds, let's look at character settings. Once again, we have four types here. Journey characters can only play on Journey worlds. So once again, Journey is its own thing. Journey to Journey. Standard means that you can go into standard worlds, so normal, expert, and master. This setting means that when you die, you lose some money, and none of your items. Medium core means you lose money and your items. Hardcore just means your character gets deleted when you die. So please, for beginners, just pick soft core. Medium core isn't really a challenge, it's more of a hindrance and an annoyance. If you like having a challenge from the get go, just pick expert bolt. There's no harm choosing soft core. But just be warned that expert is really quite a bit more difficult compared to normal. So, character done. The last possible misconception that you might have is the word hard mode. You hear this a lot, and what hard mode means is independent from whatever world or character type you choose. This refers to the state of the world after you beat the wall of flesh, which is a boss you face along the way. Once you defeat this boss, a message shows up that says the ancient spirits of light and dark have been released. With that message, the world goes into hard mode, which is like phase 2. So new enemies spawn, old enemies might become harder, and you can find new loot and weapons that are many levels above what you've had before. This is hard mode, it's just the phase of the world. Hopefully with that you are now clearer on what all these settings mean and you can make a well informed decision. Wow that took a lot of time. Let's move on then. The next tip I have is to use the guide. You know that weirdo in your world when you just spawned in? That's not another player. It's an NPC, and he's more helpful than what he looks like. Firstly, he gives you super vague general guidelines on what to do next. But more importantly, his crafting function is pretty good. When you click the crafting button in his dialog box, 
You can then put any material into this box at the left side and he will tell you what that is used for. He also tells you what other materials is needed to craft an item and whether you need a special crafting station or not. This is really helpful and if you're starting out, I put everything you come across into this. It's just great for learning more about the game, so definitely utilize it. The next tip I have for you is to build an arena. Bosses in this game aren't exactly souls-like difficult, but they can be rather challenging, especially in expert world. An arena just refers to a nice space that you intend to fight the boss in, so something simple like a few rows of platforms count too. It seems redundant, but preparing a proper arena can make a difficult boss fight become really easy. An arena helps you to maneuver around, and putting stat boost furniture like heart lanterns and banners will help you out tremendously at times. If you need an arena guide, feel free to check out this video, but you can honestly freestyle and discover your own through trial and error. The next tip I have for you beginners is to avoid everything you can. The basic rule of not dying is to not get hit. Well duh, but lots of beginners overlook that. Playing a melee character with melee armor and accessories gives you lots of defense, making you tankier. But in Terraria, even tanks will die if you actually try to face tank something. You just die slower, and all things considered, it's not even that much slower. Maybe like, I don't know, 5 seconds more? So yeah, the word warrior or melee sounds like you can face tank everything, but you can't. There are some setups where you can, but those are very limited. Ironically, the easiest melee weapons to use are the ones with ranged projectiles. Even more ironically, the best melee weapon in the game is this. So moral of the story, don't tank, just try to avoid. That brings me nicely to the next point, mobility is key. If you find accessories like climbing claws, shoe spikes, Hermes boots and the like, make sure you equip them. Not only do they let you move around easier, they also make a huge difference in boss fights. For example, the expert world Eye of Cthulhu is somewhat challenging because it dashes around so much. That could get overwhelming, but if you build a simple arena and just get a pair of Hermes boots, you can avoid it pretty easily by just running. This becomes more crucial in hard mode when you get wings and start flying. Yes, you can fly in this game. Constantly upgrading and getting better wings will help you avoid bosses, so definitely focus on your mobility. Somewhat related to that is the Tinkerer's Workshop. Along your Terraria journey, you'll come across the Goblin Tinkerer. He will sell this strange thing called a Tinkerer's Workshop, which is actually a crafting station. What this thing does is that you can actually combine certain accessories into one. For example, without being too spoilery, you can combine shoe spikes and climbing claws into the tiger climbing gear. This item will have the effects of both the shoe spikes and the climbing claws all in one. So this is really useful for saving accessory slots. Not all accessories can be combined, so make sure you use the guide to see which ones can be combined. This is also the way to get some of the best accessories in the game. The next tip I have for you is really important. Use your potions. The game becomes so much easier with them. What are potions you might ask? They're consumables that you can find as you explore, and can also be crafted on your own. They all have varying effects, from reducing damage taken, to increasing your movement speed, to boosting your regeneration rate, and can even give you an extra summoner minion. If you are playing summoner, that's actually huge. Anyway, potions can make seemingly impossible boss fights turn into something really manageable and smooth, especially the damage reduction ones and the regeneration ones. Also, make sure you eat something. One of the easiest foods to make is the pumpkin pie, which is crafted using pumpkins at a furnace. You can buy pumpkin seeds from the dryad, so these are really simple to get and boost your regen by a pretty decent amount. So if you're ever struggling on a boss, just grab some potions. They make a huge difference and are almost mandatory in expert and master mode difficulties. The next tip I have is a little more for quality of life. You should probably know that almost every boss can be re-summoned through their boss totems. This means that you can farm them as many times as you could possibly need to. This is great for money by the way. Farming and selling boss drops gives you lots of gold for buying stuff and reforging. 
the ingredients you need and the crafting station does vary, but the general rule is that you need something related to the boss. For example, the Eye of Cthulhu one requires lenses you get from demon eyes. The Queen Bee requires honey and hive blocks. So yeah, stuff like that. So if you're looking for a certain piece of loot, feel free to craft more summoning totems, then farm away and hope to get it. Next, it is also wise to keep your gear up to date as you progress along the game. Doing so will give you the smoothest experience possible. What I mean by that is don't use a wooden sword for the Eater of Worlds or the Wall of Flesh. Try getting stronger weapons like the Meteor Gun or the Bee's Knees. This sounds really obvious, but it's actually often neglected. It's most noticeable when the world goes into hard mode, or phase 2 as I mentioned earlier, because enemies spike in difficulty, and if you're using a subpar weapon, you're really going to feel it, and you're going to be in for a tough time. This is more of a risk for normal worlds, because you can get by pretty easily, but there's almost no way you're getting past the wall of flesh with subpar gear on expert mode. Just do your best to continually upgrade. Next, it's a good habit to almost never throw away anything. Yes, things can get messy, but Terraria is one of those games where you randomly need some loot that you got a long time ago. Or if you don't really want to hoard, at least look up if something is rare before you sell it. I've seen so many people sell off their rods of Discord, slime stuffs, or lucky coins. I mean, it isn't the end of the world, but when you need it later for something, you're really going to regret selling it. So, we're coming to the end now. The next general tip I have is to choose a class. When I say that, I don't mean that you actually have to choose one and stick with it. The idea here is that many armors later on tend to branch into one of the four classes, giving substantial bonuses to that class. For example, melee armors tend to give more defense and boost melee speed. Range armors give more ammo conservation chance. Mage ones give more maximum mana, and Summoner gives you extra minion slots. You are free to change class anytime, since the set bonuses are tied to the armor. In fact, it's mostly tied to the helmet. Now you can choose to be a jack of all trades and just use whatever weapon you want. It's fine to do that if it's fun to you. But just remember that a jack of all trades is a master of none. If you really want to maximize your damage output, choosing to specialize in one would be much better here. It also makes it so much easier to look for weapon upgrades. There are a few general boost armors that boost crit rate for example, but they don't last too long and they get outshined really quick. So just think about it. If you like magic weapons a lot, try mage armors. They will make the magic weapon experience so much more comfortable and so much better. The last thing that you should know as a beginner is that the smart cursor exists. This is activated by pressing the control key on PC, or by holding down and dragging the right thumbstick on mobile. I'm not sure if this is available on consoles, or if it's just always on by default. So if you're a console player, feel free to let me know in the comments if you have this. Anyway, Smart Cursor is great actually. It helps you dig really easily, since you only need to hold your mouse in the general direction, and it'll smart dig for you. It's also amazing for filling in walls, since it tries to fill in the wall systematically. You can also use it to place well-spaced torches, and even also select doors and buff stations. But it is really horrible when you're trying to do precision building. So if you see a yellow square and it's throwing you off, just turn it off. I just thought that you should know it exists. Your life will be so much better. And that's about it for the most important beginner tips that you ought to know when you're just starting out Terraria. I didn't really cover any substantive combat or gameplay tips here, but I mostly focused on the real core basics. The information here should really be something you can't miss out on, or you might have a bad experience. If you enjoyed the video or found it helpful, make sure to subscribe and hit the bell icon too for more Terraria videos and other stuff. Follow me on social media if you want, and join the Discord server if you want to say hi. This has been Zuzukorn. Have a nice day, and have a great week ahead. Bye bye!